Welcome back. Or if it's your first time here, welcome. And today we're going to talk about Bates method. In particular, we're going to talk about palming. Now, for a little bit of perspective, who is this video for? This video is for you if you're curious about Bates method or if you've tried Bates method and if you've had maybe not the very greatest success with Bates method, either because you haven't tried it or because you've tried and you haven't really succeeded. This video is less so for Bates teachers or huge fans of Bates. You're probably not gonna love this video completely. But if you're open-minded and if you have myopia, if you're wearing glasses and if you wish your eyesight was better and if you've come here looking for some kind of idea and palming was what you chose as keywords, then you're in the right place. For a little extra perspective, I'm Jake Steiner. I used to have minus five diopter myopia. I was blind as a bat. Currently have 20-20 vision, no LASIK, no surgery, no contact lenses, just natural 20-20 eyesight. So while what I'm saying might not be the only right way, it certainly works for what that's worth. Now, here's the thing about palming. And I'm not gonna go back on the whole Bates method thing. Uh, I'm gonna link some other Bates videos I shot, maybe below and elsewhere. Palming works and doesn't work. And the important thing here is if you're methodical about improving your eyesight, if you wanna have my kind of 2020 vision that's persistent, ongoing, lasts, you don't have to do exercises every day for, then you wanna understand what's going on, right? So when you're doing palming, right, you're putting your hands over your eyes, which was developed by a guy 100 years ago when we knew very little about vision biology, right? But this was a smart guy and the smart guy had hunches and the hunches for his time were pretty good. Now, 100 years ago, what did we not have? We didn't have smartphones, right? Most of us didn't read books, right? And most of us, well, actually none of us, were staring at screens all day. So, 100 years ago, when this, when this was invented by an interesting guy, we didn't have the problems we have today. So if you've tried palming and palming felt great, but didn't produce really lasting results, and you wonder why that is, then this is why. Because what palming does is two things. One, it makes you not stare at a screen. So however long you're doing this, you're not straining the ciliary muscle, the focusing muscle inside your eye, which is the, the focusing muscle in your eye focuses the lens. And the way it does it is it tightens up the closer you look at something, right? So it tightens up, and it's designed to do this, but it's not designed to do this for hours at a time every single day, right? So you have this tightened up muscle. So when you put your hands over your eyes, the muscle gets to relax to some degree because you might already have a muscle spasm, right? Where the muscle won't completely relax, but at least it's not in this tight tension. Now, when you palm and then you look at anything around you again, your focus is reset, right? Because you have not been looking at anything, so you're getting a fresh set of eyes, so to speak, and you have temporarily less ciliary focusing muscle spasm, right? So it's a temporary relief like, like putting on ice on your neck when you hurt your neck, right? It works for a little while. It doesn't fix the underlying problem. How did you hurt your neck, right? The ice will just help with the inflammation for a moment. The palming will just help with relaxing your muscles for a moment. But when you go back to staring at a screen for the next eight hours, the problem, the thing that is creating your myopia, that muscle spasm, is right back. So the palming is doing nothing for you on that front. Relaxes the eyes for a moment. And the second part is it creates awareness. If you're doing Bates method, if you're doing jumping in the monkey jungle to improve your eyesight, anything that you're doing, you're becoming conscious of your eyesight, right? Which is better than the alternative, not being conscious of it. So you're already, you're already way ahead of the game by just going, I'm consciously aware that I shouldn't be staring at stuff all day long was way more effective 100 years ago, right? Where relaxing your ciliary muscle was a much different game than it is today because people didn't then go back immediately to staring at their smartphone or the screen for the rest of the day. 
And the reason it's not very effective today is because it's not addressing the root problem, which is you staring at a screen. Take this one step further. If you're already wearing glasses, if you're already wearing glasses, the, the thing that is causing your myopia is now not just the muscle spasm, it's now the lens. The lens, which is something from the 16th century, it's silly, designed to change the focal plane in your eye to give you clear distance vision to fix what is really a muscle spasm, right? But as you get stronger and stronger glasses, your eyeball has elongated, right? And when you use those glasses for close-up vision, where the correction is not appropriate, they're for distance vision, not for close-up, there's something called hyperopic defocus happening, which means that the light is focusing a little bit behind your retina, just a little bit, which is causing your eye to elongate. That's a whole other big story. If you're interested in that stuff, links below, we get deep into vision biology, which is not the point of this particular video, but it's all there. And palming, right? If you, if you have minus five to optomyopia, like I used to, then this isn't gonna fix anything, right? Because your problem is an elongated eyeball. That's your real problem with minus five to optomyopia, and the eyeball is not gonna shorten with this. You can shorten the eyeball, science on that below, but you're not gonna do it with palming. You will relax your eyes, we're just gonna relax your focusing muscle. A better way to relax your focusing muscle than this, right, which is kind of passive, is to go outside and look at the distance, which is what your eyes were designed to do. So instead of an exercise, and this is why I'm kind of anti-exercise, because you gotta to remember to do this, and are you gonna do this in your office in front of your coworkers? How often are you gonna to remember to do this? It's not that practical. What's better is to go outside. Go outside and look at riding in the distance car license plate, street signs, whatever it is, because now you're actively trying to get that muscle to relax. Instead of this passively just burying your head, basically, you're outside and you want that muscle to be fully relaxed because that's how you get distance vision. That's how you get the lens flattened. That's how you get the most possible. So when you're trying to look at text in the distance and it's challenging to read, which it might not be if you're wearing strong glasses, another topic, but if you're challenging your distance vision, you're actively working on relaxing the focusing muscle, which is the better alternative. And it is because active, right? And it's not an exercise to the same extent because you go outside, hopefully. And the only thing you have to add is consciously using your distance vision. It's more effective than the palming, right? And you can do it longer, easier because you're gonna do this for an hour, right? It's still gonna be passive. It's still gonna be a little weird. It's still not gonna be a great habit to get into versus going outside, challenging your distance vision. The goal is the same, relaxing the ciliary muscle in your eye. It's just not a theory that was relevant 100 years ago, right? Also, while you're outside, you're not staring at screens. So there's that additional benefit. So if you're looking for long-term improvement in your eyesight, you have to understand how these things work. A little bit about the biology, a little bit why, these kinds of exercises are impractical and they were intended to solve a problem that existed 100 years ago, less so today. So I'm not bashing Bates, as I keep saying in these videos. He was a, a very inspired guy. If we would have continued on the path he started 100 years ago, we might not have myopia today. His path wasn't something designed to be very profitable, so obviously it wasn't going to happen. I think it's silly to continue to cling to something that worked 100 years ago to have that has to be the answer today which is why i'm not a big bates fan but you can take these ideas you can be like okay what was this for this was to relax your ciliary muscle how do we do that better today and the answer to that is go outside challenge your distance vision and also like this video that is also really great for your ciliary muscle and also great for your ciliary muscle is subscribing to this channel and I'll see you in the next one.